When it comes to economic assessment, feelings are no substitute for hard data. A plurality of Americans say that we're in a recession. The actual numbers on jobs and gross domestic product show an economy that remains quite strong. Indeed, gut based analysis may be even worse these days than it was in the past, given how much economic views are affected by partisanship. Republicans rate the economy worse now than they did in June 1980, when unemployment was 7.6% and inflation was 14%. On the other hand, hard data isn't necessarily as hard as you think. This isn't a criticism of the statistical agencies, which are doing the best they can and should be given more resources. It would be really helpful right now if the employment cost index were released monthly rather than only once a quarter, for example. But many of the numbers you see aren't based on direct observation of economic transactions. They are instead imputed numbers that are, in effect, educated guesses about what the numbers would be if we could observe them directly. Normally, this isn't too much of a concern. But right now, With everyone trying to figure out how much progress we're making against inflation in particular, imputed prices are playing a big role in some of the most widely used measures, and the questionable aspects of some of these imputations are arguably distorting policy. To take one example, for the past few months, I and many other economists have been greatly concerned about how the Bureau of Labor Statistics measures housing inflation. Which is really important because it makes up about a third of the overall consumer price index and 40% of core inflation, a widely used measure that excludes food and energy prices. How does the Bureau measure housing inflation? Not by looking at the prices at which houses are sold, which fluctuate a lot with things like interest rates. Instead, it looks at how much renters pay, and for the large number of Americans who own their own homes, It imputes what it calls owner's equivalent rent, an estimate based on rental markets of what homeowners would be paying if they were renters, or, if you like, the rent they are implicitly paying to themselves. The trouble is that this measure relies on average rents, which to a large extent reflect leases signed many months ago. A new Fed study shows that official rent measures lag market rents by about a year. And hey, race the thing. Market rental rates exploded in 2021, probably as a result of the rise in working from home, but have since leveled off and may in fact be falling. 